And this is how to work with reaction mechanisms and their elementary steps. Consider the following three-step mechanism, and we're thrown, shown three elementary steps here. The first one is fast, the second one is slow, and the third one is again fast. Our first question is, what is the molecularity of each step? Well, two things collide in step one. So this one is bimolecular, and so is the second one, because two things collide, or they're to the left of the arrow, and we have two reactants in the third one as well. So all three of these are bimolecular, which isn't that odd. If you only saw one reactant, it would be unimolecular. Trimolecular with three reactants is pretty rare. Okay, the next one asks, what is the um, intermediates in this reaction? Identify them. Identify the intermediates. Essentially what you're looking for is something on both the right and left side of the arrow. So C is on both sides, so it's not going to wind up in the final reaction. I think C would be a choice. And it appears that E is also on both sides of the arrow. So for this example, C and E. What is the overall reaction? Well, I just have to add them all up, okay? The C's cancel out, the E's cancel out, and so I am left with A plus B plus D plus F going to G plus H. And that would be the overall reaction. Okay, what is the rate law? The rate law is initially based on the slowest step. So, based on slowest, the rate has to be related to the second equation right there. So, our rate has to equal K times D times C. But there's a problem with this. C is an intermediate. It's not allowed to be in a rate equation if it's an intermediate. So I have to get rid of that C somehow. The assumption is that the fast step um, occurs more quickly than the slow one, obviously, so that materials build up and it reaches equilibrium. So step one is in equilibrium. So I can write that K, the equilibrium constant, must be equal to C divided by A times B. So I can represent or rearrange this so that C is actually equal to some equilibrium constant times A times B. Now I have to substitute that into here. So my rate will actually be equal to K, and I can use D, but then I should have the equilibrium constant A, B. So I have substituted for C this other expression. Now, of course, we don't know which one um, is a rate constant and which one is an equilibrium constant when we study the kinetics of this initially, so we just sort of all lump it into one rate constant. So I'll just kind of lump it into some K, and then I guess I feel like being alphabetical, so I'll do concentration of A, concentration of B, concentration of D. And that is this little k, okay? It's a rate. That is how we figure out the rate law when we have numerous elementary steps.